the guru of squad double zero the assassin like no other yes i'm the best at what i do one of the most notorious in the youtube anime and manga community don't doubt the infamy please sorry man sometimes when you have longer hair messes with you and whatnot gotta pull it back and yeah all that jazz not a ponytail or anything just just getting out the way get the out the way get up out the way what the hardest wins that we need anyways <laughs> hey man bring it different to my channel anyway like i said death match time this death match was actually on the more serious side was actually supposed to come out like last friday or something but look life busyness keep it social you know all that kind of jazz no excuse for just keeping it real with the people and you know plenty of other videos and content i drop on my channel plenty more that i can drop whatever but we here now it's that time bro is that time look man coming from the left side without further ado one of the most notorious legitimately not like myself though one of the most notorious legitimately one of the most notorious in his given world formerly frozen at just an 81 million barrier bounty one who is known as the king of the desert more or less the king of the desert might as well just say that Without further ado, the one, the only, sand master himself, Sir Crocodile. And coming from the right side, one of the earliest antagonists of the legendary Spider-Man. One of the best known villains in comics history, to a degree to a degree one of the most interesting basic yet complex characters that you come across is none other than Sandman William Baker let us begin I know I said those introductions and some of them you'll be like what nah bro you tripping you tripping with some of that but honestly if you really take a full blown consideration of who each of these characters are or which of these characters is I should say and what they bring to the table they, they really they really might surprise you I mean Sir Crocodile is oh my goodness one of the most complex uh, characters in the entire series of One Piece and Sandman he seems simple at first but when you actually dig in it's got a lot going on to it. But anyways, who wins in a death match of these two sand masters? Okay, these two dudes who are sand itself. That's the question we'll be dealing with and shall have answered by the end of this video. I'll give you my thoughts, my perceptions as I always do. Beginning with three categories. Each of those, if you don't know how, get down and broken into a few different subcategories. We begin, as always, with the attack category. And under attack, we have physical strength. Okay, people people talk about the strongest, but don't think about what that really means. Physical strength, combat speed, which is not the same as transit speed, aka moving speed. Excuse me, something blocking this field of vision. The third is techniques. Techniques matter often, not always, but often. And the fourth is destructive capacity slash power. How much you can blow jump. Like, for example, how much devastation you bring to the table. Y'all get that. It's basic ass stuff. Starting with physical strength. This one pretty easy. Click up. While Sir Crocodile is not a weekend, this man tosses, can toss around full grown man. This man with his abilities, his sand based abilities. You know, he can lift very heavy objects. He can move very heavy things. He, he tosses people around. Alright, easy. It's nothing for him. But when it comes to Sandman, this dude, you know, normal body, but in, because of his sand enhanced, he can go up to what is known, uh, at least recorded, up to 85 tons. With that fact alone, it should be a clear edge to Sandman in the strength category. So one point for Sandman when it comes to combat speed it's a very interesting one but again pretty obvious if you understand the whole element now Sir Crocodile actually fights you know 
movement uh, when he needs to. Okay, he he, and I'll get more into his fight style later. But he can hit you from anywhere, close, mid, and long range. But it's saying he's allowed to be able to more or less fly, at least some kind of hovering, flying kind of thing. Um, he, and it's saying he moves the snap like not instantaneously, but in the blink of an eye, he will move in the sand. When it comes to sand, man, he can move through sand and the ground quite well, as long as the sand. He can move quite, quite quickly, but it's nowhere near the proficiency and speed that Sir Crocodile uses. So, with that, we give it to Sir Crocodile. Like I said, Sir Crocodile moves well, with or without a sand, and quite rapidly, as he has snuck several other uh, characters with attacks via his sand or whatever else now coming into techniques techniques sir crocodile's got like 10 techniques desert a spot a bigger like uh a few of them like that he can he can use his hand all right he's got a hook you understand this is gold hook and underneath it it has a poison uh a poison container poison blade and that poison is scorpion's poison and it can destroy pretty much it can just uh, vaporize things as well as it's a blade itself um if if his hook is ever broken uh while his, with his hand he can dehydrate things okay whether it be the person it dehydrates and will dry take all the moisture if it's an uh, inorganic object like a rock for uh, example he can destroy it turn it into a rubble or dust if he so desires if he's in the desert or in certain places with the sand he can send if he's in a desert he's near impossible to be okay if he's in the desert he can sense underwater rivers and make quicksand happen okay uh, i'm pretty sure he can do that if uh, other places are very underground rivers um outside of that he can produce you know he, he has control of himself which is sand as well as sand around him I'm trying to remember it's been a bit since I did research but like I said he's got a boatload of text when it comes to Sandman well boatload in compared to Sandman Sandman can turn his uh, body into different weapons if he so chooses like a mace or club or something uh, he can assimilate sand from surrounding areas for example if he were on the beach he could use that to make himself larger uh, both of them can pre well I'll get more into uh, Sir Crocodile and his complete sand reaction in the reaction category reaction time category but when it comes to um, when it comes to Sandman he too has a similar ability but it's not exactly the same he also has one specific part of himself which is consciousness within the sand because in his sand state, he can move to and fro, like he's, he is sand itself, but that for that one bit of consciousness. Uh, he can, he can on will, control his sand dimension, like the density of the sand to where, example, if someone, like Spider-Man, for example, uh, punches him, his hand will get, then, you know, the sand will close around his arm, and he would have him trapped, okay, for example. But when it comes to techniques, Sir Crocodile has more techniques by far in comparison to uh, Sandman. So Sir Crocodile goes two to one. In terms of destructive capacity, this is very interesting. I mentioned in the desert, Sir Crocodile is nearly invincible. He's nearly invincible. Sandman, he'd be very powerful, but not necessarily invincible. Um, when you look at it, I mean, because it takes a, quite a while for him to assimilate the sand. Um, and I'll get into the, uh, well, I guess I could talk about their weaknesses as well uh, in, a, in a bit with the durability. But when it comes to the strength of capacity, Sandman, he can, if it, the more sand he accumulates, the larger he gets, the more volume, the more he can use. Okay, and he just short quite a bit. I would say at least the city. When it comes to Sir Crocodile, Sir Crocodile has, for example, a uh, sandstorm that he could produce. And he could send that. And that could easily just wipe out a city. Um, he could wipe out uh, large structures. And eventually, if he 
fully maxed out as power, he should at least be able to wipe out an island. So for that fact alone, because of the dehydration and the large scale attacks that he can use, unlike Sandman, unless he is a, has additional volume to himself, I have to go with Sir Crocodile. So Sir Crocodile wins in the attack category 3-1. to one. In terms of the defense category, you have reaction time, durability, stamina, and agility. Sorry if y'all hear any other background noise or whatever. It happens, okay? In terms of reaction time, I got to give the edge to Sir, uh, Sir Crocodile. Because Crocodile, he can turn into sand reflexively. As well as, he's fought some very fast people. And you have to more or less sneak this dude in order to get a hit on him. Okay, when it turns to Sandman, he's got solid reaction time, don't get me wrong, but you can't hit him, especially um, if he's liquefied, and I'll explain that in a little bit. Uh, he, he more or less is above average uh, when it comes to human uh, characteristics. So with that being said, gotta give it to Sir Crocodile, especially with uh, his battle experience. And when it comes to durability, this one's quite interesting. It's hard to say because at first it's hard to say. When it comes to both of them, sand-wise, they're pretty much impossible to hit. They both have one serious weakness besides Sir, Sir Crocodile has the devil fruit weaknesses of the sea and everything else. But they both have it to water. Water allows them to be hit. Here's the difference between those two. And this is why the edge goes to Sir Crocodile. Sir Crocodile, not only if he's able to be hit, which which the water, it, you put a water on him, it allows him to be hit. It doesn't completely solidify him. Though. Like it does, but it doesn't. What I mean is, and the difference between him and Sandman, Sandman literally gets turned into a muddy kind of thing, okay? Muddy kind of substance that completely solidifies him. When it turns to Sir Crocodile, he's just able to be touched. It's kind of like if you understand Armament's hockey in the series of One Piece. It allows him to be touched. It allows him to be hit. Uh, and it's hard. I cannot recall if he can use his sand or not. But, you know, it allows him to be hit. But once he's hit, he's taken some of the blows from some of the strongest uh, individuals in the series physically. I mean, whether it's Luffy, Diamond Joseph, you understand? He's fought previously against uh, White Beard and Wamuga, Yonko. When it comes to Sandman, he's pretty much done when he becomes mud. It's he's not completely done, but he has to dry out. If he if he doesn't dry off, he's he, he's stuck in. Dudes can land some serious blows on him. You know? Not saying the dudes who, who fight him in scrubs or anything, far from it, but you know, Spider Man when it comes to it, he he is physically strong, but when it comes to striking, he ain't the greatest striker. Okay. So take that in consideration. And it's too low. When it comes to stamina, we have yet to see Sandman run out of juice. Just the state of affairs. So Crocodile it takes him a long time. It, you have to seriously push him. But from the Sandman's perspective, I cannot recall at any time where he grew tired. So from that point alone, I have to give it to Sandman when it comes to stamina wise. Doesn't mean that Sir Crocodile will go out quickly. You know, he ain't, he ain't got a stamina issue. It's just, in comparison between the two, gotta go with uh, Sandman. Now, in terms of agility, neither uses agility. Neither really uses agility, but if we're going on the sand enhancement, the sand augmentation, it has to be Sir Crocodile once again. Not only is reaction time better, his sand reflex, like he moves, he can become sand itself in the wind. That kind of thing. Like, it's high level. Sandman, he can drop down and become sand or whatever. But he fights almost stationary usually. Unless he's moving around and trying to attack you from a different angle. Okay. Or he can also kind of sort of do where he hits you from multiple angles with his sand uh, and whatnot. 
but again that's not really based on agility so overall gotta go with Sir Crocodile once again so Sir Crocodile also wins that um, 3 to 1 now the all important strategy a lot of people don't take strategy in consideration when they consider death matches I do because I come from a fighting perspective when it comes to strategy we have location fighting style and fighting IQ, fighting intelligence, which a lot of people misconstrue. When it comes to location, uh, neither would want to be on the water, okay, neither would want to fight on the water necessarily because it, it uh, you know, larger the problem. Definitely with Sir Crocodile because if he falls in the sea, he's pretty much done as a devil for you. But other than that, it, like I said, if it's in the uh, desert, They'd both be ridiculous, but I don't really see how Sir Crocodile is taking that L. Even the Sandman, I mean, it, he'd be even superior to Sandman. Um, if it's in the city, it would make it very interesting. But in most locations, it'd be hard for Sandman to win. And here's why. Sandman, this is not to disrespect Sandman. Against Sir Crocodile, because of his mastery of sand and its nearly instantaneous reflexes with it and its usage he doesn't require as much size and and, and just brute force that uh, Sandman does so especially if it's in a uh, but although depends on where they're at because if it's a really really close in area like when Sir Crocodile fought in round 3 versus Luffy if it's an underground where Sir, Sir Crocodile cannot use his sand to effectively, he he's at a bit of a disadvantage, okay? So if it's a very, very tight end area, Sandman has a legit shot at winning that one. If it's in a more open or semi-open area, Sir, it favors Sir Crocodile. So the tighter it is, it favors Sandman. The more open space it is, it favors Sir Crocodile. So take that into consideration as well. Now, comes in fighting style. I've already previously mentioned that Sir Crocodile can go close, mid, long range. He can hit you from anywhere, pretty much. He has an attack, for example, where he can extend with his sand and hit you from a very, very long way at a very rapid pace, whether, it's, whether it be his hook or his actual fist or whatnot. But we've seen it more so with the hook. And a hook is, is no nothing to play with. That hook is heavy, it's big, and it's got a sharp object on the end, so you can use it as a mace, you can use it to, to stab you and whatnot. Okay, you can use it as a piercing technique. Uh, I've mentioned Desert of Spot, he can hit you with sand, he can hit you uh, with a great deal of that. He can dehydrate you, you understand? Uh, he can move around, he, he can use the sand. And when it comes to Sandman, close to mid-range he hasn't really ever showed much long-range attack oh yeah and sir crocodile can hit you with a technique to where if he hits the ground with it he can more or less split the ground um, he's also so like a sand coffin kind of technique sand barrier sandman is pretty much a close range fighter and he could press in which actually somewhat hurts uh it, it makes it a tough fight for uh sir crocodile because he wants to keep the distance if he can afford to he doesn't want to go close range because that can afford him taking them blows okay last but certainly not least most very very important fighting iq when it comes to sir crocodile very very high very high fighting iq okay this dude's massively experienced this dude is a veteran this dude knows his abilities. He's almost completely mastered his devil fruit ability to the point of even if he has observation arm and armaments hockey and possibility strongly that he has conquers hockey, we've not seen any showcasing of it. He's even been able to affect Admiral Akainu, uh, Magma Man, with just his sand alone. He hasn't even had to use hockey. That's how legit he is with his abilities. And unless you have figured out his weakness, you're in trouble. 
I don't care who you are. You, you will struggle against a dude. This dude is very crafty. He's very sly. He, he reads his opponents quite well. Um, very rapidly, he recognizes his fight style. Now, he's not quite a fighting genius, but he, he's right up there uh, nearly on that level of uh, fighting intelligence. When it comes to Sandman, Sandman's pretty basic, pretty simple. He's not stupid. He's also been in quite a great deal of, of battle, of combat. He's fought both with or without uh, help. Sir Crocodile fights alone, all, almost entirely alone. Okay, he's a one-on-one -on -one kind of guy. Sandman has fought uh, groups of people. Okay, but he keeps it relatively simple. He doesn't, you know, he keeps it simple yet effective. He he's got solid fighting IQ, like he can understand combat, but it's nothing that'll blow your socks off, as is showcased by the way he fights. So overall, and the tactics he uses, they're pretty straightforward for the most part. Overall, when I look at the whole thing, it'd be a it'd be a difficult fight, but Sir Crocodile wins it in pretty much every cat and well yeah pretty much every category. In the overall scheme of things, Sir Crocodile is a better fighter, and he would learn figure out ways to bypass. The fact alone, just from a durability perspective, that Sandman. He becomes massively affected and becomes muddy with water. While even if Sir Crocodile is hit with water, he's stable and able to go. Okay? That fact alone should just be a key sign. So I definitely got Sir Crocodile in this battle saying you masters. But these are my thoughts. What are yours? Unexpected one to like, come subscribe. Until next time, y'all. Have a beautiful day, beautiful night. Peace. Yo, these next matchups are coming, man. You won't believe. Hey, baby.